make a choice. Tell me where am I going to split that word up? All right, here we go. So I think FCPS has a long history of success in teaching students to read. And we've taken a hard look at what we're doing, and we recognize that there are things we can do better to reach more students and to have more success. So ah is all the way open, and then ah. Our approach to teaching reading is changing based on brain science and learning science. It's not necessarily something new as much as it's new to the division. It's a huge shift, but it is the right shift. The kids have really enjoyed this shift, I will say, but in the beginning of the school year, it was difficult for us as teachers. We were so focused on, I know how to do guided reading, like this is what I'm comfortable with, and it kind of took us out of our comfort zone. And now we've finally developed a really good curriculum base, and it really feels like we're rocking and rolling, and the kids have gotten used to this routine. I have to make a choice. Tell me where am I going to split that word up? It wasn't easy. At over 50 years old, I had to go back and relearn to do things. Do I need to divide here? It's getting easier, and you're seeing the results. I'm seeing kids being able to do things that I would have five or seven years ago going, that's ridiculous, first graders can't do that. And they can do it. We have seen a big difference in the kids. They are reading and writing earlier in kindergarten. They're excited to use their knowledge of sounding out words. We're blown away by their writing. All of them are able to write multiple sentences, and this is independently. This one is a tricky, tricky one. They have a word in front of them that's four or five syllables long. They've just read it, and they know that they have now become a reader. Like fireworks go off for them, for you. For you. you knew that was a short vowel because you learned. These kids, they're first graders, and they could tell you, which most adults could not tell you, that there are six ways to spell long I in a word. They know what an open syllable is. They know what a closed syllable is. And I see them decoding first as their number one strategy. It's awesome. I'm in first grade. This is my phonics notebook. So how do you spell the sound ooh? E, W, U, E, and O, O. So there are three ways to spell ooh? And also you could spell it like you, I think it's I, U, or U, I. My daughter, Jennifer, who we call Jenny, she's in second grade. I knew Jenny was having a hard time with reading, writing. Normally, when we go to the book fair, it's erasers. Oh, there's a necklace. This year, she went for books. Mom, I want to get this book, and I want to get this book. And $60 later, with happiness in my heart, she got books because she reads. Oh, that looks like that one might be fun. Since I've learned ways to read, I can pick up any book. It really changed me to know that I'm being a, like, a, like improving as a reader. When you leave elementary school, you're not being taught to read anymore. You're reading to learn. I'm a fifth grade teacher, so many students come to fifth grade with gaps in their understanding of phonics in the English language. And so our new curriculum addresses those gaps and we can get them where they need to be sooner. Equity is something that is really important to me when it comes down to it. Reading is not a privilege. Every child has the right to read and we need to be providing them that. This is the way that we're going to make a difference for kids. All students are getting the tools they need to break the code for reading. Your children are in good hands. They're going to learn to read. They're going to learn to spell. They're going to meet their potential for literacy because we're making sure that we guarantee their access to those skills.